Hi guys, today I would be talking to you about the exciting sport of cricket. Cricket is played by both men and women throughout the world. This game usually involves a batsman and a bowler. The batsman try to score as many runs as possible by trying to hit the ball as far as possible from the ground by scoring fours or sixes or in other ways by running between the fields and scoring one, twos or threes. The bowler tries to get the batsman out as soon as possible and he can get the batsman out by actually bowling him out in which the ball touches the wicket or making him getting caught out in which the bowler uh, in which the batsman hits the ball and is caught uh, and the ball is caught by Physics of the cricket bat is directly related to the Newton's second law, which relates mass and acceleration to the force of an object. When the cricket ball hits the bat, there is a collision. As an object experiences force for a specific amount of time that results in a change of momentum, the result of the force acting on the given amount of time in this situation is that the, the object's mass either speeds up or slows down or changes direction. The impulse experienced by the object equals the change in momentum of the object. Since impulse is the effect of force acting for a short interval of time and we know if this time period is increased then impact force can be decreased. This idea is used by cricket fielders who usually lower their hands when catching the ball to reduce the impact of the force. <music> Physics control two aspects of spin bowling. Number one being friction as when the ball comes in contact with the pitch it experiences resistance which affects the motion of the ball and secondly rotation which is the action of rotating around an axis or center this is represented by rotation of rotation the baller generate on the ball by dragging his fingers down the seam when both friction and rotation come together in spin bowling they generate turn this happens because when the ball bounces the seam grips in the pitch due to friction and the rotation generated by the bowler fingers mean that instead of pitching and continuing straight, the ball deviates either right or left and hence the name of this type of bowling is spin bowling. By spinning the ball across different axes, a bowler can manipulate a ball's trajectory in mid-air as the cricket ball bounces off the pitch before being struck by a batsman. Spinning the ball can not only make it difficult to anticipate where a ball bounces, but where it lands on the pitch. Fast cricket bowling is also influenced by physics. When a ball travels through the air, the air will be, will be forced to negotiate a path around the ball. The boundary layer is defined as a small layer of air that is in contact with the surface of the ball as it moves through the air. The boundary layer can adopt two methods of flow around a sphere, that is our ball, either turbulent or laminar flow. Laminar flow refers to the smooth air flow around, a, around the ball in which the layers of air do not interact and disturb each other. Turbulent air flow refers to the rough flow of air around the ball in which many layers of air mix together in a chaotic manner. Reynolds number is, can be used to determine whether the flow of air around the ball is going to be turbulent or laminar. 
In the case of fast bowling, the fast bowlers usually swing the ball by making the seam inclined at an angle of 15 degrees to 25 degrees to the direction that the ball is headed, which is such that, that the smooth portion of the ball is above and in front. In this way, the air flows smoothly around the smooth half but it becomes turbulent on the other side as it has to flow past the seam. On the other hand, reverse swing requires very high speeds and ball to be rough on one of its sides. Unlike conventional swing, reverse swing will swing in the direction the seam is not pointing. The ball is delivered in the very same method as the conventional swing. However, as the ball travels through the air, the airflow around the ball on both sides becomes turbulent due to the roughness and very high speeds. Now, as the turbulent air goes over the seam of the ball, it gets stripped again, so as to speak, into a very thick turbulent layer. This thick turbulent layer will separate earlier than the regular turbulent layer on the other side of the ball which results in a net force on the ball in the direction of the seam is not pointing in, causing the ball to swing in this direction. <laughs>